Yeah. What's up, family? It's your man, CRB Jr. here, Courtney Robert Brown Jr. Me and my man Lou, we doing what we do. Big Boss Film Works live in the Big Apple. You know what I'm saying. So nice, named it twice. New York, New York. We're here on the one train, heading downtown. Reminiscing some old days back in the day. Just left Columbia University. Did some shooting on the Upper West Side. I'll get some work done in Brooklyn tomorrow. Just want to shout out to the family. Make sure you guys are checking us out on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. I swear to God, Patreon channel is coming. Exclusive content. I will not keep saying it if it was not true. Anyway, it's your man, Big Loser in the background, CB Jr., Big Boss Filmworks, Motown Mafia Podcast. I'll let you man. Okay, so throughout the mid 90s, this business is going on, and like we said, uh, I mean, it's 30, 40,000, 20,000 a day. So it's definitely One of the 150 to 200,000 a week. Yeah, you got consistently between three Demet years. Once Demetrius put his bag down, then it was only a brief gap. Then the Dominicans put their bag down, then Pops. So it's 92, 93, 94, 95, all this is going on. So how does a house and even if you're if there's people coming to spend a thousand dollars it's still a lot of damn traffic one out of every what's three. going on oh yeah you you said you sat and did what i did a survey just bored smoking weed on the porch and um i just you know because we banging you know and this the nerd in me the academic i was like i just want to see the traffic how many people really coming the french road is a major street it's a 94 exit. it isn't but it is but yeah. it is yeah because there's a plant, or there was a plant right there. Right there. So this is, if some Detroit economics, like this is the blue cut, like this is where a lot of plants were yep. ringed around here. So even up through probably, when did the jobs really, really go away? Probably the early, not, like totally. Well, yeah, I mean, at least the time you talk Through the yeah, 80s, there was still of, some. A lot of fair, factory yeah. workers came through. So this was a prime factory worker area, which is probably part of why it, so much drug activity. It's just that simple. So backtrack. Okay, you get robbed in New York. You go see your dad's lifelong friend, my dad. You told my dad what happened to you. You guys have what kind of conversation you were saying. I told him I needed some motherfucking, if he had the raw, I needed good. He said, that dumb and I got good as it come. I said, okay, make up me a couple bundles and let's see what you can do. Coordinate of me, I think we sat there at his apartment on Six Mile, me, him, and George. We might have made up five bundles. Now, I got $4,000 worth of excellent candy from New York from Big Ed. I went to French Road and started selling a cane, you know, because I wasn't selling raw at that time. And I gave out, I had about five bundles, and I gave, you know, niggas who blow and come through buying stones, I gave them a blow. Nigga, when I looked up, I had created a motherfucking hurricane. <laughs> Them five bundles, I might have gave away two bundles. The other three were sold, and motherfuckers started running like there was no tomorrow. I went immediately, immediately from selling no raw the next day, I think I might have sold 20 bundles. The next day, 30, 40. The next day, I went to selling $50,000 a day for four months straight. Exactly. So how does, how does you said one third of the cars you counted were coming to cop? One out of every three cars stopped in cop. What's the relationship or what, not relationship, but what's going on with the police and, and, and raids and all that? So I would say... After about a year of that Pakistani run, we had about a year apiece. Now I'm still back and forth from New York. But when I when I started, so Eddie get the bag about 90 in the 93, 94. When I'd come home, he ain't talking about no police problems. It's just money coming in, no static. Then they hit they hit 3875. They hit headquarters. Um 
you find anything? No, you know, they had, we had always have had some excellent stash guys. The stash spot was with inside the actual plumbing. So, and when you, you say stash guys, just, these are people that that's what they did in the under, or that's just one skill they had? They're usually skilled tradesmen from the plant. Oh, and they, they had, over the years, they knew how to get drunk. They had so much experience. They know what, how the police How to make a boiler basically. work and then build something inside that boiler that's waterproof. Oh, wow. Or put shit inside a hot water tank. Did dogs ever get brought in? All the time. And, but they, so dogs ain't perfect. No, no, no. In fact, the Pakistanis used to test the bag before they would bring it in with their dogs over there. Oh, wow. To make sure that their smugglers could pass by Oh, the wow. Dogs. So they had trained dogs over there trained narcotics dogs and they wouldn't send the bag in unless they could beat their, they their could own beat, dogs unless they could beat their own dogs yeah mm -hmm. yeah um so you got so so you got this stash in the plumbing you're getting raided but they're not finding nothing they what about confidential informants making buys and all that was happening, which that's always how they get the how, warrant for the raid right how did you but no in particular individual they never got a, an arrest warrant for no. Who would serve, like, did you serve customers ever? Or just I mean, them? I have over the years, but no, we Not had a crew. We, I mean, yeah. So if I'm an undercover cop and I come and buy on Tuesday night, was it like a heroin spot is not really open 24 hours. Like, what were the hours? Actually, we were. Oh, really? Actually, we were. But here's the thing. If I come and buy, if I'm, the, if I'm the cop or the CI and I come at Tuesday night at 8 p.m. and I buy from one young black male, and by when we come back to raid or make another buy, it's not even necessarily the same people, or is it? Again, man, you know, we come from the ancient times. So let's be honest. You had the Cunningham family there, Benny, Bo, and Amy, shout out to them. You had Paul McDaniels, you had Jerome here. You had the Hobbs, the Hobbs, shout out to Rick Hobbs and them down there. You had Rochelle and them. You had Kevin Hill and that whole crew. Everybody knew everybody. We didn't serve despite of doing them kind of numbers. Oh. If you came here and nobody had seen you or knew you, now a bunch of people, clientele group, they come yeah, with yeah, yeah. they come with somebody, somebody we know. Yeah. And so now you good. So to be then doing, you can bring somebody you know and everybody. So doing that time, of, people weren't coming and spending thirty dollars. No, no, I mean they're just the locals, just the locals. And and okay, so 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 just using that rule of. Don't serve the people you don't know. Or who don't somebody and, need to vouch for them. That'll, that'll last you for years. Ye it's Where 20? now that's what here now with crack, I mean, is isn't it true that especially in the 80s, like a lot of people were just starting to do it. It's you're a crackhead for a month, then you're not for a month. So with selling crack, you kind of had to deal with a lot more strangers. But I'm gonna tell you, man, a lot of it that should be amateur hour. Oh. Because people be working a spot, they be young. Somebody come and start off and they buy a 20. Then the next day they coming back, they buying an eight ball. Then the next day they say they want to buy a quarter. Now you do that with me, I know you the police. That don't make, yeah. That don't make no sense. But people go for it every day. Cause they ain't been selling drugs. You, they they sold slow. somebody a, a 20 on Tuesday, now they buying ounces from you on Friday. Oh no, no, you the police, man. You the police. We not gonna do that. We not gonna do that at all. You can, it's documented. That's why I want the Detroit News and the Free Press. Because it's documented. So when you hear about the Pakistani plug, this is the fruits of that hustle. It was one of the best hustles I ever had. Good dope always sell itself. And at that time, breaking it down, here's what made Courtney great. And I mean, it made him great. Here's where he took the entire east side, or not a piece of it, the entire east side. They used to have a sample spoon at Baskin Robbins. He used to give a motherfucker that sample spoon of good dope for $10. That sample spoon, I can tell you right now, was over a half a motherfucking gram. He was giving up half a grams of good dope for $10. And this is how French Road went to be. I mean, Paul made 100000 one day. So, man, I got to close down. This shit just, it's, and it make a motherfucker scared. So much money be coming at a motherfucker, he got the duck. God damn it, you got too much coming, man. God mm -hmm. damn. And Paul worried the fuck out of me to want to run the spot. He ran, Eddie, please let me run it. He seen all the money and shit coming. He knew the tops he would make. 
And I just got tired of Paul where Paul McDaniel wanted the fuck out of me to run the spot. So. Paul Ball run this motherfucker. Paul took that motherfucker over and ran that ship beautifully. I didn't know why. He took over as a co-pilot and he co-piloted the French roll like a motherfucker. Him and Leon, boy, them motherfuckers and Clyde, certain motherfuckers, man. The Cadillac. Can't never forget them. Cadillac, wow. I mean, you can never forget, you know, the crew. And I had a wonderful crew, you understand? That run lasted for three, four years then. Yeah, and that's probably a 10 year run, shit. Why 10 years, I would say? You would say from about maybe 202 to about 10 years. Yeah, from the from It was 90. about 10 years, man. You was in New York, though, doing your thing, see? Yeah. You was up there, and I was stopping here down there and seeing him down there at Mark 125. You understand? <laughs> up there doing what they do. So he always was in New York, now they stand. So stands I was seeing. From getting robbed ends up actually leading to one of your best runs in your long right. career. I was making that French roll $50,000 a day. $25,000 was mine, $25,000 was Courtney's. Every day. I didn't miss a day. You know, you're going to, uh, so then he opens up Paul across the street. He opens up a house because 3875 starts getting raided. He cuts a deal with Paul, got rest his soul to use his house. And then we started doing barbecues and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, do you, to cover the traffic? To cover the traffic. Ah. We would feed the neighborhood three, four times a week, put out the barbecue grills. Mm. Anybody who walked down the street, you can get a rib sandwich, you can get a hot dog, buy beer for everybody, you know. And that's, so it was like a block party. We took care of the block, and the block damn straight took care. It was good to the block, and the block was real good to him. Any violence? I mean, not not obviously you guys, but just around. I mean, this is a bad area. We would always hear about it. it was always somebody getting shot or killed. You know, this neighborhood is a bad neighborhood. It's a rough neighborhood. But right over here. Reputation and how you handle it. People knew not to bring that bullshit over here. First of all, you ain't. Whatever y'all street beefs is, that he ran off with your pack at the, uh, down at the house, don't bring that shit over here. Don't bring that shit over here. You know, if you just beat the trick, because we served a lot of tricks, you know, back then there was a lot of working girls on Mac. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were some of the best ones. I'll be honest, you know, Eddie really gave girls me... Girls would be, or women would be totally nude. I mean, I was, I was in Cot, like, okay, I was at Wayne, and I was at Michigan in 96, but yeah, you drive down Mac, it would be... But you'd be amazed. Crazy. And I used to go to Timbo's, but that was on the late night hike. And then we Timbo's had, is right around here, or was? Um, remember Timbo's? I remember Tim yeah, yeah. I've been there. I've been there. Then there was this one uh, cross dresser. But I ain't gonna talk too much about that because you got to be political. But God damn, this we used to joke. He was getting more dates than girls. He was getting more dates <laughs> oh, than women. Oh, they knew it was a guy. <laughs> they knew it was a guy. He was like six <laughs> three. <laughs> but did you used to be a model in New York? Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> The police really started, the fifth precincts really started getting on Eddie's back. I mean, they started raiding like once a month. Raid van, raid van, raid van. Are we raid approaching van. the late 90s by this point, or just still, we still 96? We, we still 96. It's still the Pakistani rug. Okay. Still the, so the money is still raining in. Um, I'd say right at the end of the Pakistani run, that's when I have my problem because of my, what did Biggie say? What was me? That's what I get for tricking. Oh, when you <laughs> got caught with a couple bundles. No, that's what later. What problem? When? Oh, 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 oh! When the upshot and them jump. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a it's an afternoon or it's an evening. It's two in the morning. Oh, uh, so and you have a white gentleman from way up north in Michigan. Way up in Alpena. So, so in a big city, the way these big spots are making all this money over time. Is people from the Sabbath first? You might have like young drug dealers from Ypsilanti or something, but then eventually it's like white drug customer from Alpena. Alpena's way, it's like five hour drive on the edge of the upper, you know, it's it's in the lower peninsula, but it's like the last stop you got to cross the bridge. Yeah, exactly. So he would come down how often? Every couple times a week? At least three, four times a week. He'd become a staple. And he's spending a thousand, two thousand dollars because he's shout, shout out to Andy. Because he's <laughs> taking it back up there yeah. to sell to them, support his habit, and all that. And all that. And at this point, you're selling cocaine and heroin. Yes. But you're just were a cocaine user. At that time of life, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so it's 2 a.m. and you see your white friend Andy. By friend, I mean heavy drug customer. Heavy drug customer who's been copping from us so long now that 
we cool and um please don't judge me it was a different time in life i've been you know that was i was judging with white women man and a very you know long before the robert Redford movie he made me an indecent proposal and he was like my wife i don't know if she was his wife they might have been street wife. They might have been street a street wife. He said they were swingers or some shit. Anyway. So the white prostitute he had with him. Basically. He's willing to barter her off if I can go get him because Andy money fucked up. Traded women for drugs, Courtney. I mean, look, I'm going to tell you all, don't judge me. I was a different person, different time in life. You know, 80 to 90. Things was different back then. That's damn near 2000. That's 96, Courtney. <laughs> it's 2022 now, though, Al. Bill Clinton was president. <laughs> okay. Oh. So, um, okay, anyway, this unethical transaction occurs. Shout out to my man, Black Chop. Black Chop down there in uh, Florida with, with Eddie Jr. Shout out to Black Chop. Black Chop working the spot this night. Now, he, Black Chop earned his name. He's a very dark, dark, pigmented gentleman. He got a black hoodie on. Black Chop? Black Chop. Chopper. We call him Chopper. Chopper X. Very educated man. Served this country well. Uh, we, we thank you for your service, Brother Chop. Um, me and the broad, man, we doing what grown folks do and shit. I run out of fucking cigars. We run up to Mac and B Wick or up to the gas station at Cadillac. As soon as I, I'm parked, I pull up literally right where Lou Carr is parked. Upshaw and Rice are coming down. Two Detroit police officers. Two Detroit police officers of the Fifth Police are coming down French Road. Oh, the wrong way. The wrong, well, it's two way. Oh, it is a two way. Oh, so, this is area. Yeah, this is two way. So I'm parked right where Lewis parked, facing that way. So I'm on the driver's side, right? They are, I don't know, what's it, 20 yards. They flick me with the high beam police light. Stop right there. Now, the house is right here. I got like a quarter in my pocket of crack cocaine. Of crack cocaine. Chop, I see Chop for a minute, but then he see what's going on. He becomes ghost. And young you Becky, see? young Becky don't know what the hell is going on. She like, this shit don't happen to Alpina. <laughs> so they hit me with the high beam and say, don't make a move. Now I know the spot. And I'm like, usually Chop leave the front door open if he outside working. So I'm thinking to myself, if I don't, I'm fucked if the door ain't open. But you fucked anyway. But I'm fucked anyway, so take my chance. They say don't move. As soon as they say don't move, I run. I run. So it's a short run, right? I just got across the street. The house is here, the steps. Back then, I was in a little better shape. I, I hit the steps. One step, I'm at the door. And then all I'm thinking is, be open. Doors open. I know the house impeccably well, obviously, right? You know, adrenaline is flowing. I run to the kitchen. I know where Uncle Willie keeps the sugar and flour. I throw the bag in the sugar and flour. I run to the bathroom. Soon as I go to my zipper, Upshaw comes around the bathroom with his nine. I like, nigga, you ain't taking no piss. Get your bitch ass out of here. And I go straight parochial suburban kid. Officer, officer, what's going on? Get on the floor. Officer, what have I done? Man, they kicked and stumped me and kicked and stumped me. And every time I talk proper and say, officer, but what's going on, sir? They're like, and they just scour in the house. When you say rice, that's not the same. That's not Bill Rice who went no, in the house. That's a different one. That's Rodney Rice. Okay. Rodney Rice. Rodney Rice, Upshaw, Cole, Cartavelli, all of these guys would end up getting indicted. On for robbing drug dealers for robbing and, drug and taking bribes. In fact, I'll that. never forget Upshaw in the midst of him kicking me, says, uh, you so lucky I ain't got no dope on me. He's like, I keep a bag just to plant on bitches like you. It's Detroit and, police. Yeah. You know, and on a, on a side note, on that, without getting back in the wall, I was just telling people about the world ain't always about race. So these are two black cops. You know, I got popped by a white cop, no, by some cops a few years before that. So I uh, made it through the first two pat downs and a white sergeant, he patted me down. This in Detroit? And he finds the bag, he finds my Michigan State ID, he takes the dope and flushes that shit down. How much was it? Same thing, about a quarter. Oh. And he flushed so it wasn't bagged up. It wasn't bagged up. Yeah. 
and he looked at me, he found a Michigan State ID, and he was like, Oh, because you had what? Je oh, you're Michigan State University. Like the, oh, I thought you went to. I went to Western and State. Oh. I went to all of them because I was a very. As you know, hearing the story, I was very busy, young man. Then some gunshots go off on Hardy. And they leave you. And they leave you. How long after that did they, when did they get indicted? Like 99, Maybe 98? three, four years later. Okay. So fast forward, they steady raiding the spots. I'm back at the spot again. Eddie rolling the blood. We used to, the front room was like where they serve. Either serve through the window or serve on, through the door. And I see he's driving a white Trans Am at the time. I see a Detroit scout car pull up behind him. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, Eddie, we, look, police, they about to come in here. This is why we just roll, he talking about, he keep rolling this blunt like I ain't said nothing. I'm like, nigga, do you see the police is behind your car? Junior opened up the drawer, that top dresser drawer, hand me that bag. I'm like, man, what is wrong with you? The police are outside, directly outside. Man, will you just hand me the bag? I open up the top drawer, hand him this brown paper bag. He lights the blunt, walks directly out the door, down the stairs, walks directly to the police car. They roll down the window and he hand him the bag. And I'm sitting here in the window looking at this shit like, what the fuck is going on? He walked back in, still smoking the blood. He said, man, I got tired. They were in burnt down spots. They raided me. I give the motherfuckers 5,000 a week. They tell me they'll let me roll 24 seven. They said they can't. So, so your guys were part, you were the corruption. Oh, very much so. You were the corrupt. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> and the game is a dirt. It's a. It's. It's. You know. It's Negro just, Poppy, aka Doctor Corruption. It's. It's just business. Yes. As Damien Marley says, the whole world is a crime scene. Oh, I never. That's a. The whole world is a crime scene. The whole world is a crime scene. Wow. That's. <laughs> that's saying a lot. Strong words, yeah. but it's not untrue. The whole world's a crime scene.